Sikhs charges Muslim to be of good behavior. As 2023 AFCON kicks off tomorrow, correspondents take a look at stadia in the country. Good evening and welcome to NTA Yabu, the news at 7. My name is Anthony Gandunu. The need for Muslims to fear Allah and be, be of pure heart in order to live a holy life which gives way to al Jana has been re-echoed. The chief imam of Ansaruddin Central Mosque, Ota Ijebode, Al-Haji Hussein Kende Mustafa, sounded this during his sermon as Jumat service. Correspondent has the details. Delivering his sermon, Chief Imam Mustafa said, for the society to be free from vices, Nigerians must endeavor to be patriotic. He went further to ask the congregation if they are of pure hearts in their worship to Allah and dealings with one another. Who is without pure hearts will not build good name. No matter the work he does, he will not build good name except he has pure heart and that was why i am telling all of us let our heart be pure anywhere we might find ourselves either in the ministry or we are politicians we should maintain pure heart if we want to end well al haji kende mustafa advised muslim faithful to fear allah pointing out that it is a prerequisite for gaining al jana some worshippers described the sermon as timely and apt uh, I really benefited from it that we have to abstain from every bad deed and we coordinate ourselves for good deeds because that is the only thing that can put us to our agenda because our main goal according to the Imam he said our main goal in this world our primary goal is our agenda is paradise and we have to work towards it we should trust almighty Allah because whatever we are doing let's all believe that almighty Allah is with us prayers were later offered for Allah's wisdom especially for the leadership of the country and a peaceful Nigeria in Ijebode Anthony Gandunu for journalists delivering on their mandate as members of the estate, fourth estate of the realm requires courage and inspiration from God. This is why members of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NTA Abeokuta Shapu, organized its first annual prayers where Reverend Mrs. Fola Achidume urged them to strive to maintain relationship with God. Details will come your way in our subsequent bulletin. The need to tell Nigeria's story without bias and restore public trust in government and in government institutions have been amplified by the Voice of Nigeria. Calling Voice of Nigeria calling on the National Orientation of Nigeria for collaboration. Director General of VON, Jibril Baba Ndashi says the Nigeria, the Radio Nigeria is willing to support the agency's programs and initiative in line with the re renewed hope agenda. Kenneth Nani reports, and the report is later brought to our bulletin. Nigeria, with the support of the World Bank and other government agencies, is obtaining commitment towards completion of transmission lines to address electricity supply and demand imbalance in some ECOWAS member countries. Joshua Ojito reports that the project is expected to be completed in 2025. 880 kilometers of 330 kV and 33 kilometers of 225 kV transmission lines are being constructed from Nigeria to Niger. Bene, Togo, and Burkina Faso. Also being constructed are five substations along the lines. The North Co project's primary objective goes beyond infrastructure. It aims to catalyze efficient energy trade, encourage commercial exchange agreements, and bring electricity access to communities along the transmission line. This project is the lifeline that will interconnect the destinies 
of our respective countries. But there is delay in the completion of the project, which started in 2019, and insecurity is identified as major challenge. Member states meet again in Abuja to adopt measures and review progress made by the National Security Coordination Committee. We have to put in place some strategies to be able to continue the project. Surely we will not be able to conclude it in the two years, but we hope to make it uh, before three years. That is, uh, rather than concluding it in 2024, I think we may be able to finish it by 2025. The North Core Power Project is being funded by Nigeria, the World Bank, African Development Bank and French Agency. Joshua Ojitu, NTA News. The news will continue shortly after this timeout. Stay tuned. Now to sports. The Super Eagles gets on Good Morning Nigeria reiterate the need to critically analyze their opponents to determine the direction of their matches for a win performance at the African Cup of Nations AFCON 2023. They are emphatic that putting players in right position and being focused is sacrosanct. Lydia Samson reports. It is the 34th edition of the Biennial African Association Tournament and the continent is anxiously awaiting. Nigeria's array of renowned players do good as individuals. The guests say must harness their individuality to play as a formidable team, ensuring square pegs in square holes. We have some of the most talented. Indeed, it's been a very long while that a Nigerian became African Footballer of the Year. So if anything, mm -hmm. we've got that in the team. And that should, you know, play a role in, you know, taking the, the, the optimism of the team that, mm -hmm. yes, we've got this kind of asset. The guests decried the over-reliance on foreign coaches against indigenous players who are genuinely qualified. For me, I preferred a local coach because we have a whole lot of them. But for me, it's just not right to start discussing the coach uh, when we have a major tournament. tournament. Exactly. exactly. We should exactly. focus and support the coach because uh, irrespective of whatever happens, he's going to be the coach. We should be pointing out what we think he should do. Uh, that, that's what I think he should be doing. Those coming from overseas are they better than those at home? The defenders, those coming from overseas, are they better at home? Or could we look at some point that, okay, this is African football, you need to be combative. Do yeah. we have those that could do the job? Okay, the midfield, this is African football, you need this mechanical pressing. So those are some points, but everything should be based on merit. They acknowledge that there is no denying the visible challenges. However, in football, anything can happen. They urge Nigerians to support the Super Eagles as they commence the AFCON 2023 journey. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Still on sports, stadia are important critical criteria for hosting rights of a major football tournament like the African Cup of Nations and sees exclusive stadia across cities of Ivory Coast are ready to host Africa best legs for the next 31 days in the 2023 AFCON. Abdullahi Ajia in this compilation tells us more about the stadia for the football fiesta. With about hours to the 34th edition of the Africa Cup of Nations stacked Ivory Coast 2023, our countdown for today will be around this six stadia to host the 52 matches across cities of the West African country who will be hosting the biggest African football mundial for the second time. First, we look at the Alassane Huatara Stadium 
commonly known as the Olympic Stadium of Ebimbe and formerly known as the National Stadium of Ivory Coast. It is a multi-purpose stadium in northern Abidjan. It was opened in 2020. The stadium which hosts most of the Ivory Coast national football team has a capacity of 60,000 seats. It is the largest in Ivory Coast with a modern torch of facilities. This stadium will host the opening match between Ivory Coast and Guinea-Bissau and the final of the tournament. The same stadium that will host the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea on Sunday. Next is the state Felix Hofe Bergney Stadium, named after the nation's first president. Built in 1952 and opened in 1964, has 40,000 capacity and has gone through phases of renovations to meet modern taste of sporting events. It's also a heritage site for Ivory Coast, with the stadium being a part of Afghan history since 1984. Stade de la Paix comes next. This stadium, located in Boakai, stands as an iconic symbol for the Ivorians with a capacity of 40,000 seats. It's been been parts of the country's Afghan history since 1984 and remains memorable for the country in a number of football matches. Recent development has brought expansion of the facility to include a media center and the seating capacity. Amadugon Kulebali Stadium, located in Korogo, northern parts of Ivory Coast, is a newly built facility with a 20,000 capacity. It is designed as part of the Afghan 2023 legacy which includes a natural grass field, an athletic track, and a broadcasting facility. Lauren Polko Stadium joins the list of stadia for the 2023 Afghan. Located in San Pedro, the stadium stands as an architectural beauty and a symbol of Ivory Coast cultural richness. It can host 20,000 spectators and more. Last and of course not the least is the Charles Conan Barney Stadium, situated in Yamasokoro, the capital city of Ivory Coast. The stadium is a new addition reflecting the city's dynamic architectural landscape. It has a 20,000 capacity with a comprehensive media facility and an athletic track. Now you know the stadia to host the 2023 Afghan. Beyond this, sports pundit and observers of African football say each of these stadiums is not just a sports venue but a symbol of progress, culture and economic development with commitment by Ivory Coast to enhance its sports infrastructure and show the world its readiness to host future events. Abdullah Hajia, NGA News. We are still talking sports. 18 years after a successful host of the 2006 National Sports Festival, Ogun State is set again to host the 2024 edition of the pre prestigious Fiesta later this year. Lekon Wagbonde now gives us insight into the preparedness of Ogun State to host the 22nd edition of the Nigerian's version of Olympics, the National Sports Festival. The 2024 National Sports Festival beckons and Ogo State as the host of the 15th edition takes the baton from Delta State, the host of the 21st edition in 2022. Ogo State will welcome thousands of athletes, sports enthusiasts, administrators and stakeholders from the 36 states and FCT later in December 2024. Since the hosting right was secured, Ogun State government set the ball rolling by putting machinery in motion to ensure that it surpasses its 2006 record of hosting. Ogun State Governor Dapwa Biodun is determined to ensure that the state hosts a remarkable festival with the appointment of a seasoned sports administrator. Bokola Lokpade as the chairman, local organizing committee. State government assures of its readiness to host a befitting festival yet again as preparation has commenced in earnest. The governor inaugurated the local organizing committee and uh, we've done it we've seen that time swung into action. And in November last year, I, I was in Abuja to represent the state on the, um, the inauguration of um, main organizing committee. Weeks after that, the main organizing committee visited Ogo State with, like, together with the local organizing committee. We took them around and uh, they inspect everything and um, like two, three weeks ago too, we went to some of the, the camping sites to see what we have there, just what we need to put, to put in place and things like that. So all those things are going on. So I can assure you that um, our, our plans are going on as on their part, athletes have commenced rigorous training to put themselves in shape to compete for medals and bring glory to the state. As far as sports 
sporting uh, history is concerned in Nigeria. The Ogun State is number one. So there is no cause for alarm. We have our former commissioner for sports. He's part of, you know, I have confidence in all the uh, committee they are, they are forming and they are on ground. Um, Ogun State will not disappoint. The government will not disappoint. In terms of infrastructure and facility, the state is in better position than she was in 2006 with four stadia across the four divisions of the state, improved road network and increased infrastructure for hospitality. There is no doubt that Ogun State has a lot to offer for visitors to relish at the 2024 National Sports Festival later in the year. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NT News. So much for the news tonight. Join us next week for another package. Good night.